Welcome. This is my lecture on section 15.1 about interior and exterior angles of polygons. First of all, the definition of a polygon. A polygon is a closed figure made up of straight line segments. So if the figure is made up of straight line segments, but it's not closed, that's not a polygon. If it's a closed figure, but it, all the parts are not a straight line segment, or a line segment technically, then it's not a polygon. So that's why circles are not polygons. Closed figure, but not made up of line segments. Okay, so classifying uh, polygons by name. So uh, when we have three sides of a polygon, that's called a triangle. So three kind of gives it away for three. Uh, four sides is a quadrilateral, quad for four. Five sides is a pentagon. So penta is a classic abbreviation for five. Hex for six, hept, or sometimes sept, is uh, seven, oct is eight, non is nine, and deca is ten. So those are the kind of the names I, I kind of expect kids to know. Okay, and notice here when we talk about uh, from sept, so this is like September, or hept really for polygons, but sept, oct, october, N-O-N, like N-O-V, Nueve in Spanish, I believe it is, for November, and then D-E-C for 10. So this is 7, 8, 9, 10. One of those little things that historical interest, right? For those of us who are history geeks like me. Notice those are the Latin, come from Latin abbreviations for 7, 8, 9, 10. And those are also the last four months of the year, September, October, November, December. So this comes from back before in Roman times, when Latin was the language, that <clears throat> there were 10 months in the year. And then they went to a calendar, I think it's a Julian calendar, where we went to 12 months. And what they did was they inserted two months in the summertime. There were July and, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, July and August. Because I think June was named after the Rob Roman god Juno. I don't remember what he was the god of. but <clears throat> So this was named for Julius Caesar, and then this was named for Augustus Caesar, too, the, the two Roman emperors who were Caesars. And so that slid these guys down, so they're two off. So now this is the ninth month, the tenth month, the eleventh month, the twelfth month. But, hey, there's some history here in language. Semi-interesting. First geeky people. Okay. Uh, Interior angle is a, a angle inside a polygon. So if I have a triangle, then this right here, this guy here, this guy here is an interior angle. If you extend these sides, then this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy and this guy are exterior angles. So notice on the interior angle, two sides of the, of the figure make up the angle. On an extra angle, it's one side and an extension of another side or adjacent side makes it. So these guys up here, these don't really have a name. But we know what they are mathematically. They're congruent to the interior angles because each of these uh, vertices of the triangle is where two lines cross. So those two angles are vertical. And, of course, all the sets of exterior angles at each vertex are also congruent because they are interior angles. Or, I'm sorry, they are um, vertical angles. And what your book calls a polygon angle, some theorem I've always uh, referred to from the other textbooks we use for geometry, the interior angle sum theorem for polygons. Okay, so basically it says the sum of the measures of all the interior angles of a convex polygon, not even going to go into what that means, okay, that's the only one we deal with, with n sides is n minus 2 equals 180. So basically s, the sum of all the interior angles, is equal to 180 times n minus 2, n being the number of sides. So here we go, problem solving. For the nonagon, so there's nine sides, and if there's nine sides, that means there's also nine interior angles. Those guys always go hand in hand. Find the unknown angle measure of x. So basically we have to find out, well, what do the interior angles of a Nonagon have to add up to make? Oh, well, let's find out. 
So the sum of the interior angles is 180 times n minus 2. In this case, n is 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. 7 times 180 is 1260. Then from there, I just add up all the sides. So all the eight sides that are given, right, whose measures are given, plus x has to equal 1260. So you're going to add all these guys up, get a number for that, minus that from both sides. Boom, there's your solution for x. Easy peasy. Determine the unknown angle measures in this pentagon. Okay, so same thing. So we've got it's a pentagon, it's got five sides, it's got five interior angles. So basically the interior angle sum theorem with n is 5, 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 times 180, 540. So the sum of the angles, well there's three 90s, so 3 times 90. There's two angles here that are congruent, angle x plus 2x's equals 540. So you're going to call that 270, simplify right, minus 270 from both sides, so 2x will equal 270, and then x will equal 270 divided by the 2. I'm pretty sure it's going to give you 135. But there's the setup. From there, you should be able to solve. Simple algebra problem at that point. Determine the measure of the fourth interior angle of a quadrilateral. If you know the other three angles are 89, 80, 104. Okay, so we do the same thing. Interior angle sum theorem. 4 is the number of sides. 4 minus 2 is 2 times 180 is 360. So every quadrilateral, every four-side polygon, the interior angles always sum up to 360. So the three given angles plus our own un unknown angle x equal 360. We're going to add those up, add, uh, <coughs> subtract that from both sides. That's going to give us our solution for x. Okay, determine the unknown angle measures in a hexagon whose six sides are given. Notice two of them are in variable terms. The other four are um, numeric. So, for a hexagon with six sides, 6 minus 2 is 4, 4 times 180, 720. So, the sum of all those angles, so those four numbers there, plus 1B, right, and 2B, which I simplified, call that 3B, equals the 720. Add those angles up there, subtract that from both sides, 3B will equal whatever that number is, divide by 3, boom, there's your answer for B. Now, here's the trick when you do that. So the trick here is there's my little scratch work. Uh, so I get all these guys here add up to make the 516, add negative 516 to both sides. Uh, so 3B is 204, divide by 3, I got B is 68. Notice it says determine the unknown angle measures. That's your job, not to solve for B by itself. So B, which is one of the angle measures, that's cool. That's 68, so there's one answer, right? But you also have to figure out what 2B is. Most kids forget to answer that question. They get here because from algebra, when you solve equations all the time, that's your answer. Well, in this case, you have to use that to actually answer the question that you're asked. Okay, so that's not the answer or the complete answer to the question you're asked. So you double that, guys. So that's going to be 136. So there's my correct answer. The two unknown angles are 68 and 136. So always geometry. Make sure you answer the question you're asked. Double check the question before you circle your answer and move on. Okay, exterior angle. So the three angles inside it, any triangle up to 180, right? These two guys are linear pair, so these two guys have to add up to 180, right? And then we know all three angles inside the triangle add up to 180. So whatever this guy is here, let's call that X. So this is going to be X plus the exterior angle. equals 180, and then if we call this angles A and B, right, then we know the three angles X plus A plus B equals 180. And here's what's going on. Both these equal 180. So that means this expression here and this expression here, since they both equal 180, they have to equal each other. So x plus the exterior angle has to equal x plus a plus b. 
And when we subtract x from both sides, we end up with e, the exterior angle, is always going to equal the sum of the two remote interior angles. Okay, so the three interior angles, this one is adjacent to the exterior angle. And these two guys here are far away. They're remote. Okay, so. And for any triangle, so if you have a triangle like this, let's do some exterior angles on here. So we have interior angles A, B, and C. Because this is true for all three angles of any triangle. And let's say this exterior angle uh, X, exterior angle Y, exterior angle Z. That X has to equal the sum of B and C. Y has to equal the sum of A and C. And Z has to equal the sum of A and B. So each exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. And the word remote here is relative. It's relative to which exterior angle. So for X, angles B and C are the remote interior angles. For Y, since B is adjacent, A and C are the remote interior angles. For angle Z, which is adjacent to interior angle C, interior angles A and B are the remote interior angles. So every, every uh, triangle has at least three equations based on this theorem, the exterior angle theorem for triangles. So using it to solve a problem. Here's an exterior angle 145. These are the two remote interior angles right here. So basically 145 is going to equal 2z plus 5z minus 2. So the sum of 5z minus 2 and 2z equals 145. So distribute the one here, add like terms, to blah, blah, blah. Just do your normal equation solving stuff. You solve for z. And notice here again, you're at, you're, when you solve for z, so when you get whatever z is, the question says find the measure of angle b. So you're going to plug that number in here, multiply times 5 and add negative 2, and that's going to be your solution, right? Not the solution for z. You should actually do that. So 5z, uh, this is 1, so this is 5z minus 2, basically. Get rid of the parentheses because the 1 in front of it. 5z and 2z is 7z. Uh, minus 2 is 145. Right, so we're going to add 2 to both sides, so 7z is equal to 147. Then we're going to divide by 7, so z is going to equal, looks to me like 21. So, again, here's, again, the urge for kids to circle that, like that's the answer, but no. you got to plug it in here because the question is find the measure of angle B. So 5 times 21 is 105. 105 minus 2 is 103. There's the answer to the question you're asked. Okay, find the measure of angle PRS. So PRS, that's this exterior angle here. And so we look at the two remote interior angles. They're given in terms of x. This one's actually a num uh, numeric result. It's 90. So basically, hey, 3x minus 8 is going to equal the sum of the two remote interior angles, x plus 2 plus 90. So you're going to do all your work. You're going to solve for x. And then whatever x is, you're going to put it in here, multiply by 3, add negative 8. That will be your final solution. Everything is get the correct equation for the setup. After that, you should be good to go. This triangle right here, determine the measure of angle N. Notice angle N and 63 are the remote interior angles for this exterior angle. So F5X plus 50 has to equal the sum of the two remotes. So 3X plus 7 plus 63. So again, solve for X, find out what X is, plug the X into this expression because you're asked to determine the measure of angle N. So 3 times whatever X is plus 7. That will be your final answer. And last but not least, we've got an exterior angle drawn here. Measure is 150. The measure of D is twice that of E. Right? So find the measure of the two remote angles. So I'm going to call the smaller angle X. Right? And D is twice that. So it's 2X. So there's the two remote interior angles for the known exterior angle. So I use the exterior angle theorem. So 150 equals X plus 2X. So 150 equals 3x divided by 3x is 50. So it says find the measure of the two remote interior angles. Okay, so this one is 50, and this one is 2 times 50, which is 100. So the red guys there, that's my solution. Okay.
That concludes this instructional video. If you have questions on it, went too fast, didn't understand it, I mumbled too much, whatever, come by and talk to me for tutoring. Ciao, baby.